Good morning and welcome to Golden BC. It is a little bit warmer than it was yesterday, though I still can see my breath when I'm speaking. It is 3.8 degrees Celsius. That's what it says on the sign outside of our hotel. I have to say, last night was a little bit harrowing. Having to do the detour, the Trans-Canada Highway has been closed basically since the summer. They've been doing some road work trying to ro uh, widen the roads. So we didn't know this and we had to take a, I'm sure it's beautiful during the daytime and I think at some point Greg and I would like to come and take it during the daytime because there were some really interesting looking areas. Radium Springs, which I keep calling Radiator Springs. It, um, well you saw the elk last night. <sighs> the focusing was not the greatest, sorry about that, but Sometimes just to catch those moments, I'd rather show you something out of focus than um, miss it completely, especially something fun like that. Anyway, there were, there were some hot springs in Radium Springs, and I think at some point I would like to go back there and just enjoy some of the sulfur smelly hot springs. Today we will be heading from Golden to Vancouver. We will be staying near the airport. Tomorrow at one o'clock we will get possession of the new house. So that's really, really exciting. We haven't even walked through it yet. We're only going on photographs, FaceTime, walkthroughs, uh, meeting the previous owners. So we are definitely super excited to see our new home in real life and to finally start living our life on the west coast. The moving truck is supposed to come on Saturday with our belongings. Hopefully all is according to plan. The big hiccup that I have had is with trying to get internet connected and this was a problem before we left. They couldn't find our house. Tomorrow you'll see why. And um, anyway, they did call us yesterday. They've now put our house in the system but we still have to wait to set up and I'm hoping that we'll be able to get internet set up on Saturday. Otherwise, there's gonna be a little bit of a hiccup happening with Vlogtober and that's okay. It is super foggy out today in Golden. We are about to start on the road. Now, I am so messed up with time. Last night when we pulled into the hotel parking lot, I had no idea what time it was. The clock on the car said it was eight something, but both my cell phone and Nathaniel's device said nine something. So we had no idea. We knew we were near a time change. I just figured it was eight something and the time had changed. And then when I was asking the hotel clerk about why the highway was closed, I also asked her about the time. It turns out that the time change doesn't happen until Revelstoke. So we are not quite at the time change. So right now it's just past nine in, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes or however long it takes to get to Revelstoke from here, we will then be back an hour. So it'll be nice to kind of have an idea of what time it is. When we pulled into the parking lot, I phoned my sister who lives in British Columbia and I said, what time is it? And of course she was on Pacific time, but I was still on mountain time, so I have no idea. Anyway, I am not sure what we are going to see today. You never know what's right around the corner. I hope that you've been enjoying the little snippets. These are much longer vlogs than I had anticipated, but I am enjoying doing them and I'm so happy you're along for the ride. So let's get going today because we've got a long drive ahead of us. My first wildlife spotting of the day is a raven who is just walking along beside the hotel. I don't know how he's not letting me get too close, but there he goes off into the fog. We are driving through the fog. There is a deer sign. Somebody has put a little red nose on the rain on the deer. So I guess Rudolph crossing. Um, I don't know whether you saw that on the, the camera or not. If, if uh, I can stop and freeze frame it, I will. It is very, very foggy this morning. And oh, over to the left, I can 
see a little bit of bog. There are railway tracks also over to our left. And that's about all we can see. It is slow going and that's okay with us. Nathaniel was super happy because this morning in Golden we stopped for the breakfast of champions. What did you have this morning? A uh, breakfast wrap. He had his farmer's breakfast wrap and mom also bought you a pumpkin spice muffin. He likes his pumpkin spice muffins and I of course have my black steep tea. Um, I didn't buy just one, I bought two today. So one is in this container and the other one is in my travel mug just passed over a little creek. There's gonna be lots of pretty views. Right now though, just fog. We are driving through pea soup right now. It is very misty and definitely very foggy as you can see. As we go up the hills, the fog will disperse a little bit, but as we're going down, it is like being in a cloud. We are about 120 kilometers from Revelstoke and that is where the time change will occur. So until then, I have no idea what time it is and um, I'll figure it out at some point. A little bit of clearing here, which is nice. And hopefully in a little while, you'll be able to see some better views fog ahead. We are just in a little bit of a fog clearing so this will allow you to see a little bit more. Sunshine blue skies look like they are ahead. We just came right out of the fog and we are now seeing these beautiful views. Lots of yellow, lots of green, blue, gray, beautiful colors this morning as we drive towards Vancouver. I don't know how these big transport trucks do it. They have got to have nerves like steel. I don't think I could handle it. Especially as we were driving last night, like it was so dark and of course we weren't very familiar with the road but uh, there was actually a point where we passed and the truck had gone off the road and we were slowed right to a stop that was definitely harrowing but that little cloud of a bit of mist over there that's where we just came out of and we've rounded around the bend so we are going to have some delays today single lane traffic expect 20 minute delays it's foggy again I just passed a sign that said time zone change set your watch back one hour it's amazing that I saw it in the fog so we are now on Pacific time and yes I'm feeling really foggy about this whole time change stuff we are currently driving through Glacier National Park and it is starting to brighten up today. I'm beginning to see some of the mountains and here comes the sun. I don't normally like snow, but I do love the look of snow on a mountaintop. And that one there is incredible. We have just stopped for a moment in Glacier National Park at Rogers Pass Historic Site and behind me is the big mountain that we just passed through several tunnels and I'll give you the 360 of my location. There is just so much beauty 
to see. And trees, mountains, sunshine is absolutely glorious right now. And I think I'll turn this way with a mountain behind me. I can, I can choose whichever mountain I want behind me. So that's kind of fun. It is very nice to breathe in some fresh air. We haven't been in the car all that long today, but um, it is nice to be able to stop, get outside, and not just share the car views, which of course, after driving, I think 4,400 kilometers, or that will be our approximate total, across the country, it is nice to get some of these beautiful outdoor areas. It's, I, I, I don't even know where to point you. There is so much beauty to see here. It's, it's really quite lovely. And Greg and Scout are just having a quick walk. There is a visitor center here at Rogers Pass, but unfortunately because of COVID, it is closed. So we won't be able to visit and learn more at this point. But as I said, it is nice to step outside, get some fresh air, even though I can see my breath with uh, being outside, it's not terribly cold. It's, it's nice, as I said, it's really, really fresh. Wish you were here. And I've got the postcard views to share all the way around. What's really quite interesting as I approach the visitor center is the mist coming off of the wood as it leads up to the visitor center. And this is just a walkway. Unfortunately, it is closed right now, but tumbleweeds and mist, these seem seem to be the things that are most interesting to me these days. Right now it is six degrees in Revelstoke and it is a beautiful sunny day. I'm just gonna follow Greg and Scout and here we are. Oh look at this. Welcome to Rogers Pass Centre. Parks Canada opened this centre in 1983 to help visitors enjoy their stays in the park. Center staff films, displays, and scale models reveal aspects of, of the geology, climate, and life forms of the Columbia Mountains and of man's persistent, often tragic struggle to maintain transportation links through this forbidding gap in the western mountain barrier. And Greg had mentioned in the car it was about laying rails. And then avalanche architecture, so we had gone through several tunnels and I guess that is the here are the pictures that looked like those tunnels we were driving under so I guess that was to protect us you know, or people who are driving through in a car so that they can withstand the snow if it does come down from the mountains these look like they might be devices used to shoot explosives to control the mountains and uh, reduce the risk of avalanches. And Greg and Scout are reading the plaque. And Scout is having a nice roll in the grass. Yeah, that's how the So it's for controlled avalanches. Shortly we will be getting back on the road and continuing along the Trans-Canada Highway towards the Pacific Ocean. But look at these beautiful, beautiful views that we have ahead of us today. I'm going to have such a hard time putting the camera away. It's been a real challenge and really I need to get some knitting done. Throughout the mountains, there are several of these tunnels, and these are to 
help make sure that motorists don't get trapped underneath an avalanche. So it's not a full tunnel per se, but one that has a little bit of a roof that would allow for the snow to go over the edge. So that is something that I'm sure we will see as we continue to go through the mountains. And I'm wondering if when we go around this bend there'll be another tunnel. Because I see some lights. Here we are, another tunnel. Just around the bend. I have just pulled out my knitting and I have to be honest with you, I'm still on colors two and three. Not a lot has gotten done. I am slowly making my way through the knit vent advent pattern, but I've just been so mesmerized by all the views that I just have not done as much knitting as I thought I would. I have a whole bin right behind me with a bunch of knitting projects nothing's really been touched but somehow I'll get through them and um, right now I'm just enjoying moment by moment Revelstoke and I have to tell you the colors here are gorgeous look at those beautiful leaves there are some red edges lots of yellow I know I don't love yellow there is a beautiful river down here as we go across this suspension bridge and this is breathtaking as we were driving towards Revelstoke, the person from the cable and internet company called me and thankfully we have just set up our internet. They'll install it tomorrow. So hopefully no break in Vlogtober for us. So it is a good day. And how could it not be with these amazing, amazing views? We are just driving through a little pass here and there is a gorgeous river beside us. There are actually big logs floating in that river as well. I guess that's how the logging industry works. They use the rivers to ship the logs to different areas. But this pass is spectacular, as is pretty much all of the scenery we've seen so far in British Columbia. We've just approached something called Three Valley Gap Ghost Town and it is closed. I think what this is is there is a ghost town inside so it's like a tourist place but it is kind of ironic that the ghost town is closed. Sad but um, reality of COVID. 
So, ghost town at the base of the mountain. Looks like it's a streetscape that they've created to re-enact or show what a ghost town looked like. This train car is from Toronto, Canada. That was Etonia. I wonder if that belonged to the Eaton family at some point. Anyway, this is the Three Valley Lake Chateau. And again, closed mainly, I would guess, because of the current COVID situation. It is just on this beautiful lake. This is called Three Valley Lake. I imagine in a regular summer, this would be a beautiful and fun place to visit. I don't know about swimming in here though. I think it would be very chilly. Usually the glacial lakes are quite cold. It is such a challenge at the end of the day to narrow down which clips to keep and which ones not to include. Sometimes it has to do with what focused and what didn't, or if there was something I said that I wanted to include, or maybe it's something I said that I thought, oh, that sounds so silly. I don't want to include that. But um, it is definitely fun to be pulling out the camera and catching all of these glorious shots as we continue along the Trans-Canada Highway. The train lines um, are to our right here. There's a train crossing right here. And we just keep going through the mountain passes. These transport trucks, though, I do have to tell you, they have nerves of steel, those drivers. I don't think I would want to be driving through here, especially at nighttime with the wild animals. Last night, as we were driving, I don't think I got to share with you the wild animal signs because it was getting dark, but some of the signs that we saw had three animals on them. So there were deer, there were elk, and there were mountain goats. This morning I have seen a couple of moose signs as well as a really huge mountain goat sign. The mountain goat sign was actually quite terrifying looking so I don't think I would ever want to run into a mountain goat as we are driving along. They just look so terrifying on the signs but who knows. Anyway, beautiful colors continue. And looks like we're coming up on another town soon. They've got the signs on our left letting us know that there is food, there is shelter, there is fruit. Always a good thing. Especially when you've been in the car for six days. Fruit is definitely a welcome thing to add to your diet. And Fruit World is left in four minutes. I was just talking about wild animal signs and up on the right here, this is an elk sign. So you can see the horns, they look very muscular. So I guess for the next two kilometers, there is a high elk community in the neighborhood. And why not? It's a beautiful place to live. And I'm sure the elk really appreciate living very close to Fruit World, which is now 3.2 kilometers ahead. And, oh, here comes a deer sign. So, elk, deer, and these are those athletic looking deer. The orange is a little bit brighter than the other provincial signs that we have seen as we've been traveling the past few days. So, Lots of wildlife abound in the mountains. It's too bad that blueberries are out of season because a nice pint of blueberries would be really great right about now. They would really, really hit the spot. Okie dokie.
we are coming up on the fruit stand, which is probably what I should have for a snack. But we just stopped for gas, and I have developed a bit of an addiction to Miss Vicky's spicy dill pickle chips. Now, yesterday we saw a sign for dill pickle beer, and that just sounded so disgusting. However, I do have to say, Miss Vicky's spicy dill pickle chips. Yeah, I don't think beer with dill pickle in it would wash it down very nicely though. We have gone around Shoe Swap Lake and we are coming up around on the other side and hopefully you'll be able to see that in a few minutes and it is a beautiful glacial fed lake. There was some logging that was happening in it as well and what they would do is they would cut down the trees and then ship them down the river system and you'll actually at some point be able to see some of those logs in the Fraser River. I'm going to hopefully capture some of that footage in the next few days. We are going alongside the railway right now and there's a little bit of mist or cloud in the distance. Lots of beautiful autumn colors. And the journey has about a little over four hours left, almost five hours, before we arrive in Vancouver. And then that part of our big life change will be over. Tomorrow we will get the new house and I am really, really excited to share the house and the next few days with you as well. So traveling will be reduced quite a bit, but setting up house I think will be really quite a fun thing and especially when you see our new house, there's lots to talk about, and I'm really, really so excited to share a little bit more about it with you. I think you might be a little surprised. We have driven, it feels like all the way around Shoe Swap Lake, but it is an interesting shaped lake. So where I'm pointing towards, we've actually already been there and Shoe Swap Lake wraps around this mountain here and is huge. Back in 2006, before Nathaniel was born, I purchased this road atlas, so road atlas, atlas routier, so Francais and English, and we purchased this in 2006 just after we moved into our house in Toronto and Greg and I went to the East Coast on our own for a nice summer holiday and then we loved it so much that in 2007 we took Isaac with us and we went to some of the beautiful national parks on the East Coast including Fundy, we went to Cavendish National Park, we visited, um, in 2007 we visited the Cape Breton Highlands and um, it was just a wonderful trip and we haven't made it out to the West Coast before so this is our first journey together. Greg had come out I guess, into the Rockies by himself when he was much younger but that was before Greg and I got married. Anyway we have had this atlas route, road atlas Routier um, for so many years and you know a hard copy of a map is always a very valuable thing to have and it was actually quite helpful when I was trying to figure out how Lake Shoe Swap how that um, showed up because even though I could pull I could shrink it down on the sat nav it is sometimes nicer to see it in a paper form and then just to follow and figure out where it's going. I'm just going to turn the camera around. We are about to pass a truck that has big logs on it. So I have a feeling 
that that I will be seeing many of those type of vehicles in the next well in the years ahead because BC is known for the forestry forestry industry it had looked like we were at the top of shoe swap but then it surprised me and there is a lot more so we're following it around it actually wraps around a mountain so the Trans Canada follows it around it is quite a long and twisty lake but it's been really nice to follow it and see the calming waters of Shoe Swap. We are continuing through the Rockies and the mountains are looking a little less mountainous, a little less rocky. Beside us on the right is the rail line and also Shoe Swap Lake. And Shuswap Lake, we've been following for quite some time. It has, uh, it's a glacial fed lake and it widens and narrows and almost looks like a big horseshoe. And we've been following it for at least a couple of hours now. And just really interesting to see how long this body of water is. It's just down in the valley there. So the landscape is looking a little bit different now. As I said, a little less rocky in the mountains, a little bit more hilly, a lot more trees. The colors have been really pretty this afternoon. It's actually just past 12. There is Shuswap Lake. It's got an island in the center there. And I'm interested to learn a little bit more about this lake as I begin my life in British Columbia. We are just going through this valley system and we are coming up on Kamloops and we saw that we are now in the Kamloops Wine District. So we are from Ontario and the Niagara region is famous for its wine district. So Canadian wines are actually really lovely. Greg just said he doesn't know any BC wine companies. I said, yes you do, Mission Hill. I believe Mission Hill is um, quite a nice wine. I've had it a couple of times and I like it. My favorite is East Dell Black Cab. That is from the Niagara re region and I will miss having it, but I'm sure I will find a lovely brand that will become my favorite soon enough. This is the current view through Kamloops and very, very different from yesterday's views in the mountains. I'm not sure if we are officially in the Okanagan Valley or not. I really need to brush up on my British Columbia geography. Growing up in Ontario, you know, we, we learned a lot about Canadian geography, but uh, I've had more of an Ontario focus, I suppose, in my geo geographical knowledge. We are through Kamloops and as we continue across British Columbia, we are seeing lots of different landscape changes. I wasn't expecting to see as many changes in the BC landscape as I've been seeing today. So I'm trying to share what I can with you. I would like to say how much I have been enjoying our trip across the country together and I've really been enjoying your comments and I appreciate you taking the time to comment on different aspects of the trip, whether it is uh, letting me know information that I didn't know before or whether it's just um, saying that you're enjoying our trip. I'm really thankful for your comments as we continue the journey. 
So we are getting nearer to our destination. We are less than four hours driving away from Vancouver and it is getting a little bit exciting I'd say. So we have 184 to Hope, Kelowna 199, Vancouver 334 kilometers left to go. Slowly but surely we are getting to our destination and I'm so 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 glad that you've come along for the ride. We are back in the more hilly terrain, a little bit more mountainous. Our car was just pushing to get up the hill and the tractor trailers are also having to slow down here too. Well, it doesn't look like it's mountainous, it certainly feels like it. So we are about to, I think, go on a bit of a descent and or maybe just a little bit of a, a little dip kind of like in the roller coaster where they fool, they fool you there we've got a little little bump bump and then we'll be going down i think anyway this is current landscape and again things looking a little bit different for those of you who follow the regular podcast happy news i am finally finished knitting with mini 3 for the test knit for knit vent 2021 and i am about to start adding in number four i have not had a very productive knitting time while we've been on this trip there's just been so much to see anyway the next color that i will be adding in is this color that Really, when you look out the window, it looks very similar to the landscape. So anyway, I'm about to add in color number four, and for today, that's a huge win. The color of the landscape has also really changed. I am seeing a lot of green, where a good chunk of the day, I had seen a lot of red and yellow especially yellow with the green now it's pretty much green 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 very appropriate for the mini that I'm just about to add in I spoke too soon there are all the yellow trees there but for the most part green and we are in deer territory again Greg said he saw a sign and that this is called the Nicola Valley and I would like to say a special cheers to my cousin Nicola who has this valley named after her apparently which is wonderful. Just a quick word to Nicola if she is watching. This is a very very impressive place so if you ever have the chance to come and visit us in BC you are welcome to and we will definitely have to make the Nicola Valley part of our journey or one of our outings. It is really, really beautiful here. It's nice to get a little bit of fresh air. We have stopped at a rest stop along the way. I think we're all getting a little bit tired. We still have a couple more hours to go. I just had to tink back in my knitting because my brain wasn't quite there, but it's all good. It is always all good. It is nice to enjoy the beautiful scenery, the fresh air. Scout enjoyed getting out of the car for a little bit, having a walk, having a drink, and we are slowly but surely getting there. Unfortunately, this is called uh, some sort of I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's something creek. It's a rest area. I was hoping there would be a creek that we could look at, but I don't see one. But there are beautiful trees. There is a mountain in the background. The scenery is beautiful. Over to the right is a gorgeous creek. It makes you almost want to stop and take a drink. I'm not quite sure how well I would trust the water without it being treated, but it is absolutely gorgeous to look at, 
cold water, I'm sure, and I'm guessing that that would be a glacier-fed glacier stream. It's really neat to look at the mountains here and the colors and the deciduous trees can only survive so far up and then the coniferous take over. So the bottom half of the mountain are all yellow and leafy trees and the top half are all evergreens. And there's a beautiful river at the bottom here surrounded by deciduous trees along the bank. I believe this little stretch here has maple trees along the sides. They are all yellow right now, but they look like big leafy maple trees and the leaves are falling. There go a couple there. And yeah, they look like maple trees to me. We are in the Chilliwack Abbotsford area of British Columbia and it is a very agricultural area. These bushes to my right, I believe, are blueberries and there are more on the other side. So I love blueberries, so the fact that they grow them here makes me very, very happy. I'm not quite sure why we always seem to arrive at these major cities near rush hour. So Winnipeg, Regina, yesterday was Calgary. All around the five o'clock hour, it is 4.36 and we are heading into Vancouver. Apparently heading into Vancouver is just as bad as heading out. This is a very pretty little highway though. And um, I did get a quick glimpse over to my right and there are some beautiful mountain tops and things in the side. So out over to the side. I will probably have to capture them in a few minutes. We are um, at Fort Langley, it looks like. It's kind of interesting as we're driving along here, both Greg and I say this reminds us of the Boston area between Boston and Cape Cod. The drive going to the Cape is very similar to this, and that's a drive we have enjoyed doing in the past. Just saw a sign saying that Langley and Vancouver are not too far off. Nathaniel said he saw a skyline, but there's a truck in our way, so I can't see much at this point. We are slowly, and I mean slowly, approaching the city center, and traffic is typical of a major city. So I guess we will find out how long it takes us to get to our hotel tonight. We are looking forward to resting for a little while. It has been a busy six days, but we've had a nice time and we've enjoyed sharing some of our experiences and views with you. I'm really excited to see the city skyline in a few minutes and looking forward to sharing that with you as soon as I can. Off to the side there are mountains in the background and I'm really looking forward to seeing what the view from our new home looks like. You see pictures all the time but very different when it's where you actually live. We have arrived in the Vancouver area and right on cue the rain has started. It looked actually quite nice out and then the drops started falling. So mountains in front of us. We are just heading towards the airport. That's where our hotel is for the night. And trains in front of us, mountains in front of us. are really looking forward to exploring the city and getting to know it a little bit better. It has been a long day. Well, actually it's been a long six days, but we have made it from Toronto to Vancouver. We are currently at our hotel. We have settled in nicely for the night and had a fairly nice relaxing evening. 
and I am just going to go to bed. Tomorrow we have a big day planned. At 1 o'clock we're going to go and finally see our new home and I'm excited to share that with you tomorrow. For now I am going to get some shut eye and I look forward to sharing our day with you tomorrow and a few more days ahead as we finish off October. See you tomorrow. Bye. What Greg and I have been finding quite interesting as we have been driving along today is that these highways, which are 100, sometimes up to 120 kilometers an hour, if you take a look to this sign on the right, this is also a bicycle route. So people can ride their bicycles on this highway, which is currently 80 kilometers an hour along with the cars and trucks in that little tiny lane to the right, bike route. Craig and I think that is so, so bizarre. I don't think I will be trying it out soon. You, Greg? No. No, no way. And of course, Nathaniel and Isaac, no, no way.